A popular tech toy, many kids want it for Christmas, and a potentially deadly assault weapon, actually. After the explosion here in New York City in the subway, experts worry a drone attack could be next. Yesterday, we spoke to former Boston uh, Police Commissioner Ed Davis about the threat, and he said this about drones. As the technology becomes more reliable and the payload becomes larger for these devices, which you can buy easily on the internet, um, the, the, the problem is that we have nothing in our arsenal uh, to stop them from, uh, from coming in. So uh, it's, it's really a problem. Here to discuss, we've got former special operations intel analyst and author of Drone Warrior, an in elite soldier's inside account of the hunt for America's most dangerous enemies, Brett Velikovich. Brett, good morning to you. Hey, good morning. You know, when we had this uh, terror strike a couple of days ago here in New York, this guy uh, took the homemade pipe bomb, strapped it to himself, and went into that uh, tunnel over by the Port Authority and detonated it. Uh, but And so ultimately, he's in the hospital because he almost, you know, got burned up pretty bad. But ultimately, for a terrorist who wants to inflict damage on New York City, they could put a couple of grenades on a drone and they wouldn't even get hurt. So what's to stop them? Well, you're absolutely right. And the fact is that areas like New York City are particularly vulnerable because there's high concentration of people and that mm -hmm. it allows for a greater blast uh, radius. And the fact is that ISIS has proven that this is an effective tool on the battlefield. It's been nearly two years since we saw the first commercial use of a drone um, in Iraq where ISIS fighters took explosives, strapped them to a drone and dropped them over coalition forces. Mm -hmm. And terrorist groups are, are looking for tools like this to conduct attacks domestically. And so with the availability of, of cheap consumer drones, um, really it's, it's just a matter, it's not a matter of uh, if this will happen, but when. Brett, that is so scary if that happened here in the U.S. Do we have any mechanisms set up through our government to stop a drone? We do, but the, the, the fact is that, uh, you know, the U.S. government hasn't, has yet to really embrace uh, this technology. There are a number of different uh, devices that are being built that can actually counter uh, this drone right. threat. Even the manufacturers themselves uh, know uh, that this is something that they need to fix. So there are systems out there that uh, groups like the Port Authority and NYPD should be using and putting these, these devices in their command center that have the ability to detect uh, drones within a, a five to ten mile radius, have the ability to determine uh, the trajectory of them, where right. the pilot is that's actually operating them. And then there's also a number of systems, some that uh, we, we've shown on your program mm -hmm. before, that have the ability to jam the signal right. of those drones and actually stop them from conducting a mass casualty attack. I know here in the New York City area, the Port Authority is so concerned about drones, uh, they stopped selling them near the airport so that because there was a problem out at JFK. But uh, Brett, tell us a little bit about geofence. What is geofence? Could that help? Sure. So geofencing is a technology that's used to essentially act as a virtual fence or a virtual perimeter where the drone is unable to actually fly into a particular area. Some of the manufacturers that uh, have developed drones, drones will actually put geofencing into the software so that a drone is unable to fly in, in a particular area. That the thing great. about New York City, you know, it's, it's, a great, it's great when it's used and, you know, there are methods, you know, potentially to hack that. And that's why you do need a layered uh, counter drone approach if you're going to do take on this strategy. Strategy, but in New York City in particular, um, it's a no-fly zone, but the geofence around that city is not like it is in Washington, D.C. If you tried to fly, say, a DJI drone, some of the drones you're showing right there on the screen, yeah. into Washington, D.C., it would actually be blocked from flying over that, those locations. That doesn't exist in New York City. That mm -hmm. only really exists around the airports. And so you have the ability to fly around a particular, uh, you know, spots yeah. and, and conduct uh, these okay. attacks. And that's, that's a dangerous thing. So geofencing is definitely something that needs to be more prolific and used to, to, to counter this threat. Mm -hmm. Maybe it will be. This is something new. So yeah. thank you so much, Brett.